Hello, everyone. Welcome to Marketing Wellness. I'm Mandy Summers. I'm Roxanne Ray. And today we have a really fun topic. We're going to be talking about building communities and what it takes to build and gather people. Like, I love thinking of this as like the art of gathering. And so as we go through this episode, we're hoping that you're going to take away some uh, nuggets that can help you to feel connected and also some of our tech that we like to use or not even just resources that we like to use in order to not have to take that on all ourselves. So Roxy, let's jump in and start talking about this. I love community building. I feel like it's so fun. And I, I feel like the last three years, there has been a disconnect. Um, obviously we had a pause in our lives mm -hmm. and I actually really enjoyed the pause. I'm not going to lie. I thought it was fantastic. And I built a lot of my systems during that time because there were no distractions, but the thing that I missed, and I remember vividly missing like that, that connection of like showing up to events and hugging people and being near people and, yeah. and the feelings that you get when you're actually with someone. So we're going to talk about gathering online, but then also in person and the, the importance of that. And as we jump in, I just want to give everybody permission to let go of the shame of the guilt of the uh, disappointment that I know that many people are feeling because maybe your teams have have dropped in volume and customers yeah. there's been a lot of trauma that's come with the fact that we've we have stopped gathering and it's important that we begin to gather again to really break that spell that we've been uh, uh, like under for the last three years um i actually think that it is something that we physically need to help heal our emotions and and the state of the world right now. And so I'm excited to talk with you, Roxanne, because I remember when I first met you for the first time, um, you had gathered a huge group on Facebook to learn about Facebook ads. So let's, can we start there? Can we start talking a little bit about like creating Facebook groups as a space of community, and then maybe yeah. even go into what you like to, where you like to gather people now? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I kind of forgot about that. It feels like it's so long ago, even though it was only three years ago. I know, right? <laughs> and mean, I'll just tell everybody, like, that that week I made it into your Facebook group. You did so amazing. And this girl pulled off six figures in one week in that one Facebook group. Yes, yes. It was it was pretty phenomenal. Thinking back now, like, it's all coming back. Uh, I think the key with building community that, you know, in that instance for myself was around a common topic that people had an interest in, right? And at that time, that common topic was Facebook ads. And I think it was just kind of like the perfect alignment of different things, right? We're all stuck at home. People still had businesses. They needed to get out there. Before it could have been in person. It was other methods that were not necessarily online. And now they knew, hey, I need to learn Facebook ads because that's where people are currently gathering, Right? Yes. They're on social media. And so that was just a bringing together, a, a addressing a need, right? And I think that a lot of times communities form around a common need, right? It yes. could be just coming together to enjoy something together or learn something together or just like talk about a topic that you're really interested in. And for that particular group, it was a lot of fun because – I had been doing Facebook ads at a very large scale for clients all over the world for a long time. And now I had the chance to teach people online how to do the same thing. And so yeah. I had a ton of fun with it. I love it. Well, and I think there are a few things that you said that are key that I, I want to reiterate for our audience is that first of all, you found the need. And it was, you found the need in something that you were good at teaching. A lot of times what happens is people will want to step in and maybe copy someone and what they've done. And you stepped into your genius. You, you like found what you were good at and then learned how to talk to that pain point in a community group. And I actually think that's the challenge here. A lot of people, they want to gather a community, but they go on and maybe they're using Facebook groups and they just post content that yeah. is pretty generic. 
Yes. And it doesn't actually connect. Yes. So another thing that we need to talk about with Facebook groups um, and gathering a community on Facebook in general is it's important that you don't just get into that uh, habit of posting random, you know, <laughs> facts every day, which I've been guilty of, right? And you you know what will happen is it will be totally silent. Like there will be very little interaction. Whereas if you reverse engineer, like what's the pain point that I'm speaking to? You can ask questions, post yeah. polls, do uh, GIFs. GIFs are my favorite. I mm -hmm. love them. Ask for a GIF because it's like it, the algorithm loves it as well. Like you can post live videos and you can do those normal static posts. Yeah. So I found when I'm gathering my communities in my Facebook group that in my groups that it's so important to change it up. I don't know. Have you found That's anything as well? You know, the one thing that sticks out for me with Facebook groups in particular is that people love sharing their opinion. Yes. <laughs> and so if you can do things, <coughs> excuse me, if you can do things that allow people the opportunity to share their opinion or share their thoughts on the topic, you will get in crazy, like crazy engagement on those things. Yes. And if it's a little controversial, controversial, I cannot talk today. <laughs> a little controversial, even more engagement. Yes. So, yeah. and I hear you, right? A, a lot of times, especially when you're starting a new group and you're trying to gather people and you're trying to uh, market to people and attract people to your group, you're like, what do I post? Yeah. And I've done the same thing as you, right? It's like, I need to post every day and I got to share something. But the things that you're sharing, ask yourself, would you even share those on your own social media? Yeah. That's a good question. Like, is that something that you would share in public? Right. <laughs> you know, one thing I want to point out is um, when I'm focused in on gathering, I think a lot of times what we've been trained to think is valuable is actually not, which is why some people struggle having a website not as valuable as having a funnel right mm -hmm. like the funnel is where you're going to collect connect and collect with the community the websites where your community your future community is going to come and be scattered right and they might not ever make it into your facebook group or your email list or anything like that so you have to be clear on what you're using to gather so mm -hmm. for me i use funnels to gather and you also have to understand that a Facebook group is different than a Facebook page. A Facebook page, uh, you pay to play, right? You can yeah. run ads to it. You can get people to come in there. But the magic happens inside a Facebook group, which you cannot run ads to, right? Mm -mm. That's where Facebook wants the communities growing. And so I would, if it were me, and this is actually what I've done, I stopped focusing and becoming obsessive about my Facebook page looking and being perfect. And I started focusing in on connecting in my groups. And that, that's when everything shifted for me. And I think part of connecting a group includes also responding to other people's comments, even you yes. as the group owner. I think sometimes we have this idea that we can only be the ones to like gather them and everyone then needs to, you know, engage together. And you kind of forget to be that engager yourself. Yeah. I think that's really important is answering questions or even asking further questions. I, that's like my thing. And I'm sure you probably know this. I ask a lot of questions of people yes. to get them like thinking and flowing and like getting the ideas out. And so I do that everywhere. I do that everywhere yeah. and sharing my own stories. So people love hearing a story. So ask people to share their story. How did they get started? Why are they here? Why, you know, I always thought I, <laughs> this actually reminds me as a child, I always asked why even past the age that children ask why, like I just always wanted to understand my world and why specifically why people do the things they do. I've yeah. always been fascinated by that. And so I love asking people why, well, why are you that. doing that? Why are you in business? Yeah. Why are you like, why? And so if you just well, remember that. And that actually is a great kind of segue into this next point, which is um, when you are welcoming people into your Facebook groups, or let's say maybe you're not gathering on Facebook, you're gathering through a membership site 
or you're gathering through Circle or Telegram or Voxer, like any of those types of things. Um, it's always valuable when someone comes in for the first time to ask them, what are you hoping to learn? How did you find me? And why are you interested in being a part of this group? I love asking those questions for a couple reasons. First, it starts a conversation. Mm -hmm. And they, they begin to see that this isn't just a random group. There's actually humans here that are responding. And then also it helps them to feel heard. When you're gathering and you're, you're bringing a community in, you want people to feel seen and heard. You want them to, to feel like they're not just the fly on the wall, that they're special. And another thing that I love to do is people will come, they request access to the group, they answer my, my questions. And then a couple times each week, I go in and I do a welcome post. Facebook makes this super simple. You go into your members and you click create a welcome post. You can even just do a post and on there it says like a welcome post or something. They've added that there. And it will automatically tag everybody who's brand new in the group. And that's where you're like, I'm so excited you're here. Yay. Drop a GIF in the GIF in the comments below. What, what's your favorite one? And tell me what you're most excited about. Something like that. So we've connected with them answering the questions. I personally like to message them when I let them in. And then we connect again um, in a welcome post. Those are valuable at helping people to stay engaged in the community and helping them to feel connected, which is what we're about, right? Mm -hmm. We're here to market wellness. We're here to help people feel emotionally, mentally, physically well. That requires connection. Yes. Well, I want to take this a step further. So you talked about the welcome post. And someone actually asked me today, how do they increase engagement in their group? They have people that join, they do the welcome post, and then the person a couple weeks later becomes disengaged and kind of disappears. So how can they keep everyone engaged? This was my suggestion. I'm really curious what you have to say, but I'll okay. just share what I what I shared with her first. I said, Facebook, there's a ton of Facebook groups out there and I'm in all kinds of different ones for based on like my interests. Like I joined a, a cruise based Facebook group recently because I'm going on a cruise, right? I joined like a travel group and a couple other groups. And I noticed on some of the times when I joined a group, I'm like shy to post. Yeah. And you know, my marketing brain is always working. So I'm asking like, why, why do I feel that way? What's going on? Because I have a group. So I'm wondering if people feel the same way, right? And it's because it's not clear what the boundaries are of that group mm -hmm. and the culture that's been cultivated there. And so my suggestion to her was create a welcome video that's sort of pinned at the top that mm -hmm. explains the culture of the group, what they can and cannot do, and more specifically what they can do. Obviously, you're not going to tolerate, you know, promotions, unkind, disrespect, things like that. I think that's a given, but really outlying what they can and can't post. Because I'll be honest with you, Mandy, I've joined some Facebook groups where I've tried to post and every single post gets denied. Wow. And I'm like, well, forget this. Why am I here? And so, right. so, that, so I have like PTSD, right? So then when I join a new group, I'm like, ooh, I don't want that to happen again. Can yeah. I? Like what's happening? So you're yeah. kind of assessing. So I'm curious what you, like what you would do in that instance if someone asks you, well, how do I keep engagement up? Yeah. So, um, I actually run my groups. Maybe you'll have PTSD from my groups. <laughs> I like to, <laughs> I like to keep my groups very curated. I maybe is the word. Um, I don't, I don't want random posts like thanks for adding me because I feel like people are there to learn. They're there to get some valuable information. And if they have to sift through a ton of things. So there are groups where they're meant to like go in and question and do all those things. So those are great groups. And I want everybody to feel like that you can fully participate the way that I've run my groups and I've kept my engagement up is I will post like every week I post something where it's like comment below and that's giving them that option of you know, it's like comment below for the homework, comment below for what you're struggling with, comment below, like come up with those pain points of things that you know they're there for so that they feel like they can talk, but it's all in one thread. So this will do a couple things. First of all, 
Anytime you have a lot of comments coming in, Facebook is going to show it to more people in the group. It's like with anything in social media, if you post on Instagram, if you post on TikTok that first hour, 12 hours, if people are interacting with it, if they're liking it, if they're commenting, they're going to show it to more people. Like TikTok mm -hmm. is very specific with this. Mm -hmm. They release it to a certain number. And then if it gets stuff, they'll go, you know, they expand. Right. Groups are the same. Yes. Same concept where if you can get these threads where you're talking and you're allowing people to talk, but it's organized so much more engagement. I love the idea of the video at the beginning. I think that's super valuable. You know me, I'm like all about like have them see you, hear you, yeah. understand you, feel your heart. Um, I love using the guides or units. They keep changing, you know what they're called, but you can go in and, and enable these on your group and you can say, start here. And here are some tips that you want to go through. And then the other thing that I think is way underutilized, and I think everybody should be using this is the event section. Mm. You can go in and create an event and then invite everybody you're friends with in that group. And then after you've done that, give it a couple hours, maybe a day, grab the link for that event, take it to the discussion portion of your group at everyone and say, I just wanted to make sure you knew this event was coming up. Mm -hmm. You are going to increase the, the people that actually show up to the event so much more just from doing that. That is such a valuable tip. I love that. And you know, it's really fascinating that you, so you don't let people make their own posts. They can only comment on your post. Yes. Okay. So, so. I like that. That's actually really <laughs> I mean, that's a way to run a, a group, a community. And yeah. like you said, when that post has a ton of comments, Facebook then pushes it out to more people who are already in that group to see it. Yes. And I think we've all experienced that where we're scrolling Facebook and we see posts from groups that we're a part of. I love yeah. that. I think combining that with the welcome video, explaining that is how the group is set up and this is how the group is run and what they can expect. It's really about setting expectations with that video. Yes, a hundred percent. And that. you know, people will post and I have a couple of groups that I have a lot of posts that need to be approved in. What I like to do to manage that is I'll just message them. Either me or one of my assistants will, and whatever their thing is, I'll say, Hey, take it to this post, or I can answer their question or concern right there. Hey, I, you know, I saw your question, um, blah, blah, blah. Here's the response. So it's not that you want to ignore all of that. I just like, I can get a group from zero to 190 in, in like a two days, right? And it's because of this. It's because you're being very intentional. I'm choosing to post polls. I'm choosing to post questions. I'm choosing to post GIFs, live videos. And all the time I'm asking them to engage. I'm yeah. encouraging them to engage. Well, another favorite thing to get people, um, get groups active um, is to set up an event, do exactly what I just told you, and then go in and right before, like maybe 12 to six hours before, do a post with a GIF that has some crazy, like something that's gonna catch their attention that says, are you watching live or the replay? Now this is super valuable because people, once again, you're gonna get 50 comments that are like live, replay, replay, I'm at work, you know, blah, blah, blah. Mm -hmm. And then afterwards I go back and every hour I'll respond to one or two of them. Mm -hmm. So it keeps like that engagement up and you're sending them to the link of the replay. Oh, right. here's the replay. It's in the group, it's in the media section, but you send it to, you can even go in and then tag them in that video. So now you've got like even more engagement. Okay. I, I have that. one more tip. Okay, one more tip. So for engagement and pulling in communities, there's a feature in Facebook, in your community, in your group, where you can go on and see who the top contributor is. Yes. It's in the settings. Yeah. So if you want to re-engage people, I would suggest running a re-engagement campaign where you say, we, in this, these next seven days, I'm going to give a $20 Amazon gift card. Uh, my favorite is a bubble diffuser, a bubble diffuser, like something, right? Something that somebody's going to want mm -hmm. to the top contributor in the group. Mm -hmm. And then you just go in and you say, and you explain it to them. Facebook will tell me who the top contributor is for this, this week. Mm -hmm. And here's how you can 
uh, be the top contributor. Comment on the posts, like the posts, share the posts, tag friends in the posts, um, watch the videos, like spend time in this group, go through the units, like tell them what they need to do to, to get to that point and your group is going to instantly grow. That is such a great idea. I forgot about that feature. I actually used that to incentivize people. In fact, yeah. way back when I used that to pick the person who won a free scholarship. Yes. <laughs> Totally. Yes. It's a great way to do like do a giveaway. Yes. So, um, I love it. I, I love that feature. I think there's so many things we can do in a Facebook group and, um, and that's a great way to, to gather communities. Now, is this the only way? No, no. Like, obviously, like I ran a triathlon team for years without Facebook groups, without any of that. I did it all through, um, email list and, zoom calls and things like that. So those are other great features, but I don't want our listeners to think, well, I'm not in person with my team or my teams all over the country. That is not an excuse no. to not gather your team. That no. is not an excuse to not gather your customers. You have to be the leader. You have to be the, the representative that says you are welcome here. Yep. All are welcome. Come on in. My arms are open and I want you to, to be here in this community with us. Ultimately, when you're growing a wellness business, that will exponentially grow your business so much more than posting on Instagram every day, in my yes. opinion. Yes, I, I agree. I think it's really, truly about that community feel. We're pe and, it, and so let's just define that a little bit further. What we mean by community feel is that people feel safe to engage, number one, but also number two, they feel like they... This is their way of getting to know you. Yes. Yes. Right? And so they feel like, you know, you and I know this. When we meet people in person for the first time, they act like they've known us forever. I know. And we like, so true. I, I'm trying to place this person in their face. I see yeah. the little square. I think I, you know, right? right? But they're like, oh my gosh. Ah. And how do we do that? By creating By community. Up. And yeah. showing up and engaging and helping people safe to engage themselves. And so that's what you want to create. You want to create this, this environment where people feel like they're getting to know you as if you're there with them in person. Yes. I love that. Okay. Let's wrap up with one more topic that we can do really quickly. We promise we're almost done. <laughs> so some people hate Facebook. Some people are adamantly against Facebook. They're like, I hate it. I don't want anything to do with it. I'm, you know all the things, right? Mm -hmm. Um, so I just recently put you, put you actually in a group on Instagram. Instagram allows you to create these, um, you can save things into groups. And I was oh. thinking this would be a cool way to gather people on Instagram. Yes. I haven't tried it out yet. Besides just you and me, we're sharing reels, the things that we should create. But I started thinking you could create subscriptions with this. You could create education groups with this. Like there are so many things. Like if you just want to be on Instagram, okay, it's time to lean in mm -hmm. and find the groups on Instagram. Yeah. Or you have been amazing at gathering your team on Voxer. Mm -hmm. So do you want to talk about that for just a minute? Yeah, okay. absolutely. So I'm one of those, it's like love, hate relationship with Facebook. <laughs> I understand it has its place. Shoot, I'm in marketing. I get it. But me personally, I already spend way too much time on Facebook. I don't want to spend any extra time than I have to, right? So I decided to put my team on Voxer for a couple of reasons. One, it has a walkie-talkie feature where I can send a voice memo and give coaching and advice to my team very easily on the go, right? And two, because it's just an app that you download on your phone, you can't access it from a computer, right? It's only on your phone. So when I'm not working, my phone's not with me. And so there's no distraction. Right. And with that, I very much, I, I invite people in. I allow them to, it, it, it's really interesting. They answer each other's questions now. Yeah. Right? It's so they beautiful. They engage with each other. They're sharing links. They're sharing information. And I'll jump in every now and then to, um, Okay, that was the right term. I jump in all the time. I see everything. <laughs> <laughs> I meant 
there's certain times where I'm like, ooh, if I say something or do something here, it will increase that engagement in the group. Right. Right. And and people love it. Well, and I, I will say this much that it also doesn't give away phone numbers, which I love. Yes. Because if you're using WhatsApp, they instantly have access to your cell number. And that can be challenging, at least, at, you know, for me, if I've got students or customers, uh, most of the time I'm fine with it, but sometimes it gets overused and it's a lot to take in on your personal phone. So, yeah. all right. Anything else before we wrap up today? I actually love this conversation. I could talk about gathering forever and ever, but I think we've given an enough golden nuggets today to ha help you hopefully get get started uh increase your engagement i would challenge you to try this out for a week if you've got facebook groups that are dead take some of the tips that we gave you today and start implementing them go in and see your statistics before i love doing this snap a picture of it before snap a picture of it in a week and you will see progress Yes. And I'm really curious for those who are watching the YouTube, put in the comments, what, where are you growing your community? Is it on Facebook? Yes. Is it Instagram? Is it Voxer? Is it something else entirely? I'm really curious all the places, cause there's so many places these days. Yes. These, the options are endless. I'm really curious. Put in the comments where you are gathering your community. We really want to see that. Okay. Thanks so much for being here. And we hope that you jump on to the next uh, podcast that we're doing and we'll see you again next time. Bye. Bye.